So here's an educational video about GM adjustable vacuum modulators. If you've ever dealt with one of these things, you know there's a screw down on the vacuum nipple and you turn it in to make it shift a little later and a little harder and turn it out to make it shift a little earlier and a little softer. Supposedly the range is two to five miles per hour, two to four miles per hour, depending on what you read. So I bought a transmission for my Firebird from a guy online. It was all rebuilt. And uh, as I do, I turn the screw in as far as I could. I like them to shift a little bit late and a little bit hard, or really hard. And what happened was I turned the screw in and it went click and it stopped turning. I couldn't get it in and I couldn't get it out. Since with an old modulator, it was this one here, you can see it's kind of old looking. Uh, I bought a new one and I did the same thing to the new one and guess what happened? I turned it in too far and it went click and the screw wouldn't move anymore. So I said, ah, oh, crap. So I bought a third one, which is in my car now, and I only turned it in like two turns. But it's always bothered me. What happens when you go too far? Why can't you get the screw to back in? Did it come out of the threads? Why can't you get it back in the threads? What does it actually do? Is it increasing the spring load by turning the screw? Or does the screw do something else? Does it restrict the vacuum? So I took the original one that went click on me and took it apart. All it is is a, uh, you know, a swedged can with diaphragm in it. And as you can see, this thing had been sitting and got moist, I guess, because that's all like corrosion dust in it. That's gross. And you pull the diaphragm out, all you have is a, a vacuum uh, piston, I guess you call it, or whatever. And that actually touches the modulator valve in the transmission case. So as vacuum, you know, pulls it in and lets it out, it affects the uh, modulator pressure. It makes it shift harder, later, firmer, earlier, softer, blah, 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 blah. So the way it looks like it works is the screw is in the nipple and it sits like that. And again, it's all corrosion from sitting around, so just ignore that. I'm not using this thing anyway. And you can see it threads in and it touches on this spring and cup. And the spring and cup live here. And that's how it works. When you, you push all together again, what you're doing is you're actually loading that metal plate what load, that loads the spring. So that's how it works. So when I had pushed it in too far, screwed it in too far, I can do this one-handed, this screw actually came out of that thread. That's a threaded nipple. So when it came out, it got cocked and it would not back up and get back in the threads, which is what this one did too. This one's jammed, I can't get it out. So I've always wanted to see what was in these things to see exactly how they work. I mean, I know the theory, but till you see it yourself, sometimes you just don't know. So that's how they work. It directly affects the spring pressure. As you turn the screw, it goes and turns it more and more and more. So there you go, there's your education for the day. That's what's inside these things. So learn at my expense. I mean, they're only like 15 bucks. It's not expensive, but if you go too far, the screw will come out of the threads and you won't get it back in. I've never had this trouble before. All these years I've been playing with these things, I've never had this problem. Then I had it twice in a row, this one and this one. Kind of upset me. So what's the moral of the story? I don't know. Uh, they tell you not to go more than like four turns. I can't tell you how many turns there is. I'll have to back it out and uh, start from flush, I guess, to the top of the nipple and see how many turns I get before it falls out. So let me do that and I'll put it in the notes somewhere in this video. Well, that's it, guys. And by the way, I try not to swear because I've had a couple of people ask me why I swear so much. I mean, I'm a mechanic. I'm belligerent. I swear sometimes. <laughs> it's the way it is. Sorry. If I offend anybody, I apologize. But, you know, once in a while I cuss. All right, that's it. See you later.